The Soviet Union is responsible for creating the Special Underwater Assault Rifle, also known as the APS. It was one of the most unique weapon designs of the Cold War era. The APS was explicitly designed to shoot frogmen underwater invaders. It can fire 5.66mm ammunition at a rate of 500 rounds per minute, and its magazines can hold up to 26 rounds. Although they don't perform as well on land, these gas-powered assault rifles have better range and penetration than a spear gun underwater. The APS barrel isn't rifled, and it contains a shield that breaks up bubbles to help guard frogmen shot from a concealment spot. These weapons have been around since the mid-1970s and have been used by over 10 different countries. And just as it was about to be forgotten as another peculiar Soviet creation, it was brought back in 2016. But what for? Is there danger looming in Russian waters? In the early 70s, frogmen represented a rising threat to Russian naval bases. To defend against attacks by these soldiers trained and specially equipped for underwater raids, the government developed several new defensive strategies. The first underwater guards were armed with only a knife or an AK-style rifle. This weapon would be stored in a waterproof base, but could only be used on the surface, so when the men were underwater, the blade was their only protection. When the SPP-1 underwater pistol was released in 1971, it proved to only be useful in close-up attacks rather than distant charges. Russian weapons inventor Vladimir Simonov undertook the job of developing an underwater assault rifle capable of long-range shootings. The APS underwater assault rifle, also called the Special Underwater Assault Rifle in Russian, was introduced in 1975. Its design received a state award in 1983 for innovation. This was a very ambitious project, as nobody had ever built a functioning automatic underwater firearm. The most crucial issue was designing a receiver that worked underwater. The APS's structure had to make room for water to flow around it easily. To make this possible, the gun's receiver was open at the rear. It also contained a gas controller to allow it to work both underwater and on land. The weapon fired a 4.75 inch long 55.66 mm caliber bolt, specifically designed for the APS. Its magazine held up to 26 rounds. The gun's barrel was not rifled. The fired projectile was kept in line by hydrodynamic effects. Thus, the APS was somewhat inaccurate when fired out of the water, but still worked. Compared to spear guns, the APS had a more extended range and a more significant penetrating power. This proved useful when a frogman guard wished to shoot another diver through the reinforced thick dry suit and a protective helmet. Although the APS was definitely more powerful than a pistol, it was also heavier. The gun took a longer time to aim, especially when trying to swing its extended barrel and large flat magazine while underwater. The APS was adopted in the mid-1970s as the primary weapon of Soviet frogmen and Serbian river flotilla soldiers. It's also been used by the Soviet Union, Cuba, India, Azerbaijan, Vietnam, China, and several other militaries around the world. When TASS, the official Russian news agency, released a video and a long article in 2016 displaying these underwater weapons' virtues, it raised many eyebrows from the international crowd. Frogmen really do only a few things. Surveillance, sabotage, and fighting other frogmen. By displaying the Russian frogmen's power, many saw it as an indication that their anti-terrorism forces are ready for possible underwater attacks. Since the Cold War, the Baltics have been a pressure point between the former Soviet Union and NATO. Today, the Russians have two naval bases there, one in Baltysk, an area between Poland and Lithuania, and another base in Leningrad Oblast. These small, though strategic fleets connect Russia with Eastern Europe. Each of these bases has anti-aircraft weapons. As the years have gone by, Russia has observed NATO expand more and more, turning some former buffer zone areas towards the west. In July 2016, the government reset the leadership of its own Baltic Sea Fleet. Experts believe this is a clear sign that Vladimir Putin wants the bases run by the very best naval officers in case of a future geopolitical or military confrontation. The article even states that, quote, Leningrad naval bases are designed to ensure the protection of ships and submarines of the Baltic fleet 
from sabotage and reconnaissance units. Showing off their still futuristic rifle is another way for Russia to show off its power. But who would the country be confronting in the Baltics? Some experts have pointed at the U.S. Navy SEALs or their German equivalents. Without a doubt, underwater Cold War-era tensions have come back to the Baltics. Watch Dark Space, our newest channel that features the most mysterious and little-known stories of U.S., Soviet, and global space exploration from the dawn of the space race to today. Click now for our latest episode, The Cosmonaut Space Gun. Click now to subscribe.